Hey, this is Dr. Gala from drthadgala.com, founder of Complete Care Health Centers. And today we're talking about aspirin versus fish oil. For those of you that don't know, I still am surprised that I find that uh, a lot of people don't know this, but back in May of almost two years ago, so uh, 2014, the FDA came out with a statement that says, the FDA has reviewed the available data and does not believe that evidence supports the use the general use of aspirin for primary prevention of a heart attack or stroke. In fact, there are serious risks associated with the use of aspirin, including increased risk of bleeding in the stomach and brain. And it goes on to talk a little more about defining a primary prevention versus secondary prevention. What that means is if you do not, or if you've not had a previous issue with cardiovascular, a heart attack or something, the, the FDA, you can go right on their site and you can find this, um, fda.gov, and you can do a search for uh, consumer guides for aspirin and so forth. They have no longer, for over two years now, they've re no longer recommend aspirin as a primary form of prevention. And I had a discussion with a patient today on this and he was asking he went into his doctor and his doctor said yeah I think you need to be taking aspirin and it still surprises me how many people don't recognize the power of fish oil over aspirin there's a study that came out that showed that taking aspirin for about five to six months about 60 to 70 percent of the people were able to completely eliminate their NSAIDs or their non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and were able to reduce their arthritis, whether it's arthritis, and arthritis can be in a lot of different places. And up to 70% of those people were satisfied with the results and would continue taking fish oil. We know that fish oil gets to the root cause of inflammation. Aspirin stops it when it actually becomes a chemical process before it actually um, turns into inflammation. So fish oil gets to the root cause. Aspirin just treats the symptom way downstream in the chemical process. So that's why if you look at an aspirin bottle, it says you need to take it so many every so many hours after your body metabolizes it. So my suggestion is to be taking fish oil on a regular basis to help with overall heart health and of course all the other benefits that come from taking omega-3s. Now to be clear, I'm a much bigger fan of taking uh, animal-based omega-3s such as fish oil, krill oil, things like that, um, or, or wild game type fats. Essentially, you're looking for the EPA and DHA that or you're looking for that as opposed to the plant-based omega-3. I'm much more of an animal-based omega-3 fan versus uh, plant-based omega-3. The research shows that you only convert anywhere from two to 20% of plant-based omega-3 into animal-based omega-3 before your body can use it. So whether you're taking, whether you're a vegetarian or not, um, if you're taking plant-based omega-3, your body has to convert it into the very similar form that you find in the animal-based omega-3s. So I suggest taking fish oil. Typically I suggest anywhere from two to three grams or two to 3,000 milligrams of EPA DHA combined a day. And even taking more than that, if you are, if you have a health issue that you're trying to work towards reversing, such as diabetes, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, sleep, nap, neuropathy, et cetera, or arthritis. Um, if you have a heart issue, of course, anything that uh, I'm talking about in these videos, before you make health changes, you need to talk to your physician, but you can increase that and you can go up even higher than that if you uh, have a health issue that you're looking to prevent or that you want to reverse, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, etc. Because we know omega-3s are very, very anti-inflammatory. We know aspirin can be as well, but of course, as the FDA has discovered, that the uh, there can cause a lot of damage in your stomach and in your brain. One of the problems is that the cause and effect isn't always immediate. So you may say, oh yeah, I've been taking aspirin for years and it's not a problem. Well, that can be a problem because that's like saying I've been smoking for years and I haven't gotten lung cancer yet. And that the toxins can build up over the years and can lead up until you, because you, you don't you don't feel necessarily like the plaque in your arteries hardening. You don't feel um, lung cancer growing. Usually there's a major event such as a heart attack or you find cancer on an x-ray after it's already present. So to avoid things from ever coming on, that's why I encourage you to avoid taking aspirin. Again, talk to your doctor if you're taking it and not using it as a primary form of prevention and instead taking fish oil. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you need more resources, certainly you can go to, to drthadagala.com or Complete Care Health Centers and you can check out um, there as well as on our podcast where I go over much more in depth about inflammation and other tips you can use for health. So I'm Dr. Gala and here's to making the rest of your years the best of your years. We'll see you soon and I'd love to hear a comment below if you like this or if there's something else you want to hear on a topic, feel free to, to leave a comment down below or share like this and uh, we'll see you about following up with you. We'll see you soon.